जमशेद जी नसरवान जी टाटा अ विजनरी एंड अ पेट्रेट मोर देन सेंचुरी अगो जमशेद जी नसरवान जी टाटा लेड द फाउंडेशन ऑफ अ बिजनेस दैट नाउ स्प्रेड अक्रॉस सेवन बिजनेस सेक्टर्स एटी कंट्रीज सिक्स कॉन्टिनेंट्स एंड टच इज द लाइफ ऑफ मिलियंस इंस्पायर्ड बाय हिज डिजायर to see india as one of the world's advanced nations he conceived of institutions and policies far in advance of his times jamshed ji was born on march 3rd 1839 to nasirwan ji and jeevan bai tata in navsari gujarat an intellectual and cultural center for parsis his father was the first businessman in a family of priests At the age of 14, Jamshed ji left Navsari to live with his father in Bombay. He studied at the Elphinstone College, one of the foremost institutions of that time, and in time he passed out as a green scholar. While still a student, Jamshed ji married Hira Bai Tabu and became the father of two sons, Dorab and Ratan. After graduation and a brief apprenticeship at a solicitor's office, he joined his father's firm, Nasirvanji and Kalyandas General Merchants. In the 9 years he worked with his father, he learned about commodities, markets, trading and banking. Jamshed ji started his own trading company, Tata and Sons, the precursor of Tata Sons in 1868 at the age of 29. The capital invested was rupees twenty one thousand. He ventured into textiles after making a detailed study of the Lancashire cotton trade, in order to replicate that success story in his own country. In 1874, Jamshed Ji floated the Central India Spinning, Weaving, and Manufacturing Company with a seed capital of rupees one hundred and fifty thousand. He went against prevailing wisdom. and based the company in Nagpur the heart of Maharashtra's cotton country rather than Bombay or Ahmedabad on January 1st 1877 the day queen victoria was proclaimed empress of india the empress mills came into existence empress mills introduced many innovative products and processes jamshed ji went against established conventions and set up a board of directors with Nasirwan ji as chairman and himself as the managing director he introduced ring spindles instead of new and induced the manufacturers to refine them to give 12000 revolutions instead of 6000 jamshed ji pioneered several welfare schemes for workers at empress mills shorter working hours well ventilated workplaces recreation facilities creches sanitary living quarters filtered water and a dispensary for treating minor ailments he launched provident fund gratuity and accident compensation schemes for workers long before they became statutory in the west in 1867 on a visit to check out new machinery at manchester he attended a lecture by Thomas Carlyle English philosopher and author and was much struck by his statement that the nation that has the steel will have the gold driven by his dream of seeing India among the league of industrialized nations Jamshed ji decided to build a world class steel plant in the country the british government was skeptical and reluctant to extend support to Jamshed ji's venture Sir Frederick Upcott, the Chief Commissioner of the Great Indian Peninsula Railway, scornfully promised to eat every pound of steel rail the Tatars succeed in making. Jamshed ji was unfazed. He started diligently collecting information on minerals in India. At his request, Charles Perrin, the foremost geologist in America, came to India to prospect for the best site. He said he was compelled to do so by the character, force and kindliness radiating from Jamshed ji's face. Jamshed ji went to America 
to study the technology being used by the steel plants. He saw the poor conditions American workers lived in and was determined this would not happen at the steel plant he set up. He described his concept of a township for steel workers in a letter to his son Dorab five years before a site for the steel plant had been finalized. Be sure to lay wide streets planted with shady trees, every other of a quick growing variety. Be sure that there is plenty of space for lawns and gardens. Reserve large areas for football, hockey and parks. Earmark areas for Hindu temples, Mohammedan mosques and Christian churches. The poverty of his countrymen deeply affected Jumsetji, but he was not an advocate of what he called patchwork philanthropy, which only benefits the recipient. He believed that what advances a nation or a community is to lift up the best and the most gifted so as to make them of the greatest service to the country. It was in this spirit of encouraging the best that Jamsetji established the J. N. Tata Endowment in 1892 to enable Indian students, regardless of caste or creed, to pursue higher studies in England. This flowered into the Tata Scholarships. Jamsetji's vision for India did not stop at a steel plant. Bombay had over 100 textile mills polluting the city with coal-fired boilers. He wanted to replace them with a clean source of energy, hydroelectric power. His ambitious plan envisaged the creation of a reservoir between the hills of the Western Ghats and an artificial waterfall that would turn turbines to produce electricity. Also on Jamsetji's agenda was the setting up of an institution of scientific learning and research to develop India's technical resources. Jamsetji pledged rupees 3 million, a third of his personal fortune, to this institute, but he was firm it would not carry his name. He wanted it to be a national institution with a national name, the Indian Institute of Science, so that individual benefactors would be at ease contributing funds. Jamsetji did not live to see either the Indian Institute of Science or the Tata Hydroelectric Power Supply Company or Tata Steel set up. Only one of the ventures he worked so hard for saw the light of day in his lifetime. The Taj Mahal Hotel. Built 21 years before the Gateway of India, it was Jamsetji's gift to Bombay, a luxury hotel that even now stands apart from its peers. Legend has it that he set his mind on building it after being denied entry into one of the city's hotels because he was an Indian. The Taj Mahal Hotel has a list of firsts to its credit. It was the first building in Bombay to use electricity and the first hotel in the country to have American fans, German elevators, Turkish baths, and English butlers. The 10 spun steel pillars that Jamsetji personally selected at a Paris exhibition still hold up the ceiling of the hotel's ballroom. The fate that Jamsetji reposed in his people motivated them to fulfill his dreams long after his death in 1904. His extraordinary vision was given concrete form by his two sons, Dorab and Ratan. Under Dorabji's chairmanship, the first ingot of steel rolled out of the steel plant's production line in 1912, eight years after Jamsetji's death. The Indian Institute of Science started functioning in Bangalore in 1911. The Valvan Dam started production of hydroelectric power in 1915. Over the years, the Tata Group has grown and evolved, staying contemporary and at the forefront of India's industrial needs. What has not changed is the underlying Tata philosophy of constantly remaining true to the needs of the nation and society. Jamsetji's innovative zeal 
philanthropic spirit and values form the bedrock of the Tata Group. The rich legacy that he left behind continues to guide the Tata Group's journey to this day. In a free enterprise, the community is not just another stakeholder in business, but is in fact the very purpose of its existence. Jamsheed Ji Tata, visionary, philanthropist, founder of the Tata Group.